There we go. Uh, this is welcome to the February 3rd uh, chaos DNI, maybe soon to be DEI meeting. Um, today is we have the opportunity to facilitate by committee. Doesn't that sound amazing. So, Elizabeth, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> I will and then you can just say that. you can say one sentence and then just hand it off to somebody else. <laughs> I I noticed Matt that you picked the easiest thing on the agenda to facilitate. The, the welcome. The, I I the announcement of <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. So um, let's talk about this change to DEI. I'm not sure what all's involved in that. How we feel about that. I think we had um, pretty. Uh, pretty heavy consensus last time when we briefly brought it up. So do we want to talk about that in a little bit more? Um, Justin says DEI, question um, mark. So that would be diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so just kind of including that piece of it, which seems to be kind of the way that um, people are thinking about the, these issues nowadays. So I think that it's, um, it's relevant and um, I'm personally behind it 100%, but we can absolutely chat about that for a minute or longer than a minute, because it's kind of a big thing. So what do y'all think about it? It certainly seems to be the term I'm seeing more often. The, the dogs seem against it. Um, the dogs are against it. <laughs> I think there was something in the yard. Um, DEI, I want to say that's stay in Spanish, which is God, but I'm not sure it's spelled like that. So we should also make sure whatever acronym we pick, if we are changing, doesn't have any other connotations. So no diversity, inclusion, and equity. <laughs> you know, when you mentioned it yesterday on, what we're, I think it was the badging call, um, I then started to see it uh, many, many places uh, and started to pick up on it. It, it, it seems to be uh, uh, the way that, uh, I don't wanna say, gosh, this is, this is not good to say it this way. Um, I, I don't wanna say a trend, but it seems like there's a con consensus or I, I'm just se seeming to, see it a lot out there. I, mean, I can't remember where I saw it, but um, to give examples, but I, I started to then notice it quite a bit. I'm, I'm quickly trying to look up um, God in Spanish. <laughs> um, it's Dios. Justin looked it up and posted it in chat. So I'm thinking oh, they may be Latin for it. Um, but I've seen idea and I inclusion, diversity, equity, but I don't know what the A is. Um, and that and that's really is kind of sad when we have to think of what the letters, what other connotations the words have, but welcome to 2021. Um, so idea is a good one if we can figure out what the A is. Looks Maybe it's like accessibility. It says access. 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 Yeah. Well, that would be good for us because we do a lot of accessibility. Yeah, actually, I really like that. See, aren't you uh, glad I had coffee? Emily, <laughs> Emily yeah. had a comment too, just with respect to equity. I had kind of this question, right, as to what the different terms mean for, um, for our work. So Emily, I don't know if you have a comment on that or just want to share that. Yeah, I just, um, a lot of people will ask what the E means. And although we know it means equity, they kind of figure, try to figure out, you know, what it means in relation to diversity and inclusion. And so I just put that little excerpt in there that I found online so we, we can kind of see why it fits in the equation and why people are going towards, instead of just DNI, DEI, so that it's more inclusive of the role diversity as well. Thank you, cool. Um, do people do, so I, I, I idea had come up and I had, I have seen this one 
I had seen this before. Um, Me. And What's my that? perspective on this is, I, yeah. I guess, I like I like adding the equity into it. And DEI, I, I still kind of group that with DNI. Um, I just feel like IDEA. I just know there's so many acronyms that people love to use for that, and can get really confusing. And from my perspective, I'd rather be more clear and direct about what we're doing. And like we could we could probably come up with ten words of things that we all look at and do, and they probably would be accurate. But I'd rather be as clear and recognizable as we can and because also the other piece of this is we also need to go and think about where have we written like i'm okay with changing the name but i think we have to think about where have all the places we've written dni working group where do we need to update this to yes. be consistent our calendar invites our website our documentation our github repositories like it's going to be that's more of my yes. concern than what the what the exact acronym is but i like dei i think equity is also like emily said i i think it's Equity is a very, it means it has a very clear definition to me. So I like, I'm, I'm fine with including that as a word, but I'd maybe like to just limit it there just so we don't, just so people can still make, make sure we're not losing people on like, what is this acronym? Yet another acronym. I don't know. Yep. And Over. what caused the name change? Was there a reason for it or? I think part of it, at least to me, was what is happening kind of in, in the world right now with respect to DNI and and the trend towards including equity in the conversation with DNI that's broader than just chaos. So but does that necessarily mean a name change? Scope, yes. Um I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate because yeah, yeah, no. right yeah, yeah. that we have to find everywhere and replace it everywhere and everyone knows the group as and um, renaming things like we just went through with the Open Infra Foundation is not always easy. <laughs> um, so I just want to make sure we're doing it for the right reasons, that we know what it's going to entail, and that we do pick the right thing um, if we're going to change. I um, I have I have ideas opinions I guess on this too. Uh, is that like. We're as as a DNI working group at Chaos. We're doing our best to like we're we're a group that helps teach other people how to understand DNI in their organization, event, project, whatever. And we um, are. I mean, we can talk about names for a long time, but I think that we just need to have something that's easy to understand and captures as much as possible while still being easy to understand. I think DEI is in that DEI is in that spot though. It's hard for me to say, but um, I think um, if we're going to be, it's like if you're a social studies teacher, you got to make sure you have your ethics in check uh, and, and understand that really well. It's like we we need to. Um, understand what we're changing the name to and why we're doing it and then how we're going to go about doing that if we do that. I think those are the two important things there. I think that for me it signals that equity is something that's top of mind for us um, in whatever manner that manifests in our through our metrics. Um, I think that it signals to the broader community that, you know, we, we also care about this issue and we care about what effect that has in open source. And um, I'm kind of like Matt, like I kept seeing it everywhere. And I think that that's, that's also a signal that it's important to other people. And I don't, I feel like if we want to, as Matt Snell said, if we want to be kind of seen as um, not on the cutting edge, that's not really, you know, uh, the right terminology, but if we want to signal to our community that we are current and that we are paying attention to how this space is evolving, I think that adding the E and signaling to our community that the equity piece of it is also very important and as equally as important as, as the others, um, in, in, again, in whatever way that manifests through our metrics. So just my two cents. I think for me personally, the name change is, is a lot of work, but like that's a solvable problem like that's not hard it's just a lot of work um, but I think that's an easier thing than saying oh it's it's too much work let's just leave that out and then feeling like we're being you know like not keeping up with you know what what the the culture demands and and where they are so just my two cents 
Elizabeth, I really agree with with what you've just said. So uh, uh, plus one for me. Um, if we do uh, change it, I would, for all of what you just said, I would actually like to see us go with the idea name because it does it does the same thing from an accessibility standpoint meaning it it keeps us as a current or forward thinking group that that cares as much about um diversity and inclusion as we do about equity and accessibility. So, okay, uh, since we're group facilitating, I'm gonna jump in here and facilitate for a second and say, um, so we need consensus on this is what it sounds like. And uh, how are we going to go about doing that? Do we need, uh, what I put in here is do we need to vote? And there is, is there an option at this point not to change it to something else? But, um, I think, um, yeah, a poll, a, a vote, something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely, um, Justin. Um, we Do we want to go ahead and ask if we're going to do this and maybe solicit people's information on how, we're, how we would do this if we did do it? Can um, I and, make yeah. a suggestion here? Find out what it's going to entail first. <laughs> and then if we decide that that work is worthy and doable, then we decide what we're naming to, because if we find out that we need lawyers and everything else, it may get to the point where it's just not feasible for us to do. I agree. Let me, um, I can take that on just to kind of look at what the cascading set of things would be. And it might just be a search of the, the repo I, even. Yeah. Um, but places that I would put levels of concern on if there's any legal naming. Um, I can't imagine, I mean, we haven't had, I'm just trying to think through when we even formed DNI in the first place with the LF, you know what I mean? Like kind of, kind of, like, I remember the first meetings in Los Angeles, we broke out the DNI stuff, but whether, you know, documentation and all that stuff, I don't know. Um, I just I can know that right I can now send we're it. looking for like the word he in the open infra foundation bylaws because our previous chair was a male and was for years and now we have a female and whoever thought we would need to change. Um, so yeah, just certain things. I can, that I can certainly ping that. somebody at the LF just to ask, just to kind of <laughs> see if there is an issue. Yeah. And that'll determine whether this is a worthwhile effort or not. I'm okay with any of the names we've proposed, to be honest with you. Um, just making sure that we don't pick one that has another meaning in another language. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, this is great feedback, everybody. So Georg, we were just, just to fill you in at the tail end of this conversation talking about um, DNI and perhaps changing the name to DEI. All right, thanks for the update. And the other option that is on the table is IDEA, which includes accessibility in the name. It's the same. I guess at least in my, my, um, my comment on that is that I certainly see uh, DEI more often right now in the world. Um, I think maybe to Justin's point, I think this is the, the idea could be a very difficult acronym to identify with the term idea. I don't know if you were saying that Justin, but that's what I heard. <laughs> and so yeah, um, I see it with the innovation kind of stuff a lot as a buzzword, but it doesn't mean it's okay. off the table. It's just, I, I see it used in different ways. Yeah. I'm thinking it's partly as the, um, to Elizabeth's point, kind of being consistent what is out in the world as well. So, um, and then I wondered, is accessibility, um, is that, how do we have that covered at the moment? Like, do we consider accessibility to not be an issue of inclusion? 
Is that a dangerous question? Something. Well, I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking for people that have a lot more insight than I do. So it wasn't meant to be dangerous. I'm just trying to get. Okay. Justin, I also do. I group it into inclusion because we're trying to include everyone, and that includes access to me personally. All right. Okay. So um, let me do a little bit of just kind of investigation across the chaos landscape, lawyer wise as well, and just kind of see what any cascading effects can be. And maybe we could talk about this again next week. That's okay. Okay. Um, and whoever is taking notes, thank you. So, <laughs> and I'll be right back. There's a chicken in the house. I love it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> you heard it right. Uh, all right. Um, Matt, do you want to, this is about the badging. Do you want to? Yeah. So if you look on that link there, if you'd like. Um, you can see that our, on our badging list, we've awarded our third badge, uh, third gold badge also. Um, and um, let's see, so it was for an, a Linux Foundation event called CDCon. It is from a repeat offender um, as far as someone that has come back. I guess that's not a good term for it, but someone that has come back after a review and submitted another event. Um, and we we may we're thinking because we have like four reviewers that are that are like that we can bring in for reviews right now. So we're thinking we may need some more reviewers for the project. Um, it's a relatively small time commitment, um, like maybe um, uh, twenty minutes per comment at most. But um, I just I wanted to poke on that. I'll send out the reviewer sign up sheet. Um, I'll put it in here now um, and just excited to see how this is turning out. Hey, Matt, um, we talked, Matt Snell, we talked a little bit last time about adding that as a volunteer opportunity. Is that something that you still think would be of merit or do you want to um, focus on this group for volunteers or, or other groups that we've been working with? Um, or do you want to open it to everybody, I guess, is my question. Because I can actually uh, put it in the newsletter. I'd like to focus on, um, on on this group for reviewers, but I think we could open it to the chaos community as well. Um, just have okay. to like know that they have some experience with DNI or DEI or IDEA at one point or another uh, and, <laughs> okay. and can talk about this kind of thing, um, kind of understand it a little bit. That's what the application's for, though. OK, OK. Um, I am going to send this link to you. If you can do me a favor and just fill this format form out, Matt, that would be great. And then that will remind me to put it in the newsletter. Yeah, that sounds great. And also Thank just you. to note, um, if you're a little nervous about getting started with the project and you don't know much about it, um, we like our onboarding process is very personal. It's, it's I have a, a, me or one of the other maintainers has a meeting with you and walks you through the process and talks about what you need to do. So that's uh, that's just to demystify that process to talk about what, what goes on there. That's it. Maybe it's worth noting too that as part of the review process, it's a lot about just ensuring that an, in this case, an event uh, has an event code of conduct and it's displayed publicly. I mean, that's it's really not about kind of judging um, the merits of the code of conduct they use in relation to the event. It's it's not that level of, so it's that former. Or with respect to um, say diversity access tickets that they have kind of a clear process by, if, that was something on the table. They have a clear process by which diversity access tickets can be requested and a clear description of how they're awarded or something along those lines, right? So it's really just about trying to understand that the events are taking time to attend to these particular issues, not really um, critiquing the kind of that next level. It's the, really that top level. So I, Elizabeth, that might be important to somehow articulate in the 
in the request for help. Okay. That would that I'm thinking that would also be good in the outreach. Here's what here's what I'm seeing in the in in the outreach efforts it, that at least that I folks that um, I've talked to or that we've talked to um, is that they're wondering. Apologies for the background noise. We're having work done on the house here. Um, I that they're they're some folks are concerned with how intensive it would be the the time and resources that are required. And so we've heard it from the Comcast team. I I don't know. Um, uh, if, it, if others who were on that call, if it came through for you like that, but the Comcast team, I think, was worried about the time and resources that it would take to apply for a badge. And oh, great, um, sorry. Uh, and- um, No problem. <laughs> uh, we're also, um, I, Katarina uh, Pond, who is um, a director of the Women Who Code Portland, um, is it's also reflected that. Um, and so if we have an estimate of, you know, it's this many questions or it's, you know, it's just a few minutes of time or, or something like that, it, it might help us. Um, and maybe we already have that and, and I've overlooked it, um, uh, but that, that might be helpful um, in, in when we talk to these folks to, uh, to make sure that, um, that they know it, it isn't a, a, a huge time sink or it's not a ton of resources or you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, and at this point we have an applicant that's done two applications. I think, honestly, she would be the best resource because she's gone through the process. I could reach out to her and ask how long did it take to overall, you know? Yeah, uh, that for me. Yeah. Yeah, reach out to her. That, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have then, action for myself. Maybe we should we could do kind of three things. One is um, to reach out to Rachel, I think is her name, and ask how long, how much time it did take. Um, the other is we can share the issues, the GitHub issues that are the application process with people. If they just want to look at the amount of communication that occurs. So, like for example, this is the most recent badge, awarded badge. And so you can get a sense Perfect. that's not a not a huge amount of yeah. back and forth. Yeah, this is great. Maybe put something, uh, I'll work on putting something uh, um, kind of kind of a, a few statements about, uh, you know, that points to this and that, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that reflects this. And any information, Matt, that you can um, mm -hmm. get would be great. And we'll I'll put it together for them. Okay, I have an action. I'm going to do this after this meeting. So, great. Well, congratulations, Thank Matt. Yeah, and thanks, Nicole. And it really, really happy about the the badging program or initiative. It's really cool. Um, and I, I'm, I share your concern, Matt. I think if more events are, if, especially if we demonstrate that the process is fairly lightweight <laughs> and doesn't take a ton of time that that might actually bring more people to the program, which we would need more reviewers. So, all right. Um, speaking of that real quick, Matt yeah. Snell, how many new reviewers are you looking for? Oh, um, at least two, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully um, two or more. Um, I think the more the merrier, as long as you don't have like 20 and they're just getting bored waiting for reviews. Um, yeah, 
I think anywhere from two to like eight would be great. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So we have the next item on the agenda is issues in the DNI repository. So I'll post this. I've actually been spending a little bit of time over the last few days. <laughs> Some people have probably seen my <laughs> my pings in the risk working group as well as the DNI working group um, to do just this. Kind of start attending to our issues. So the link there in the chat. Um, we're actually pretty good in DNI at this point. So you'll see that those um, metric release notes and metric release candidates, the red labeled issues, I'll share my screen. The red labeled issues, these are these are just part of the release process. So those these candidate items will go away once the release is done and the release notes stay in there forever because these are just release notes for Kevin as he's aggregating uh, metrics from the different working groups. A lot of the other metrics in, or I'm sorry, a lot of the other issues in here are metric ideas. And I think in the past, we talked about simply keeping them there. There are a couple fairly, uh, they're larger issues. And this actually came up, the chaos front end components on the website. This came up uh, from Kevin who does website maintenance and is this something that he would like to do on the website. So this is, I don't know, we, I, it's possible I could actually move these out of here and into the website. I don't know what, what people think of that because it really seems like this would be in something in Kevin's, Kevin's area. Should I? Yeah, if you can mute, move something that doesn't belong there to where it really belongs with, you know, in saying a note, you know, that this isn't really a DNI issue, it is a front end issue. So moving over to here, um, it probably got put in there because it was visually impaired users yep. and accessibility, but not realizing the work might be done by somebody else. Yep. I think that um, Kevin probably has similar issues already too. So okay, I'll double I don't know check. We, I'll yeah, we could even close those. these and just for, for reference or something. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right. So honestly, from a from an issue perspective, I think we're doing pretty well <laughs> on, on DNI. Um, but I, I think these are going to serve. Kind of, we've had some administrative work to do for a little while here, but. I think at some point when we start really getting back into developing metrics, I think these can serve as a great starting point for us again. Um, we did have a couple PRs. Um, oh, this is me. Um, so this was a um, an issue. So on one of the comment periods, you know how we have the metric release candidates and we have the comment period. This was on the chat platform inclusivity metric that I think Justin had brought forward a while ago. And honestly, all that it was was really, this PR is about just there at one point there was a reference to chat service and the request was to change it to chat platform just to be consistent. Everybody all right with that? <laughs> See, just from a naming, pretty, yeah, right. So thank you for, for identifying that and then just pointing out that these are public shared chat rooms. There's a comment there. So I think this is all, it's fairly low overhead on PR. So if somebody wants to, okay, great, thank you. Um, I'm not going to merge my own. So if somebody else could click that button, <laughs> that would be super cool. All right. Um, ah, it, look at I, I, I still am just so fascinated that that happens like that. So <laughs> every time, I don't know why. <laughs> um, 
So then this was a larger one, um, which has a slightly bigger. So this is with respect to burnout, I think. Mm -hmm. So this, this is going to take a little bit more work. I think some of the suggested changes move us away from the template. You know how we have the, the metrics templates, you know, like objectives and description or description objectives and implementation, all that kind of stuff. So some of these suggestions move us a little bit away from that template. I do think some of these suggestions are meant to kind of also consolidate the set of questions that we have. So I made a comment on this as well. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw the notification for this, but when I read through the proposed changes was it wasn't it wasn't connecting. So I pretty do not know what to say. And also, I think the reference part was actually uh, mistakenly removed. Though I think if you scroll down to the reference, it doesn't like have um, there's nothing on the reference part. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, the previous one didn't have it either. Oh. Yeah. So I actually, yeah, the changes were so much. I didn't, I didn't know what to. I mean, I, th I think if I it's not. I'm pretty confused on this one. Yeah. So we, we don't have to accept all pull requests. <laughs> That's completely fine. Um, <laughs> and so, I mean, if, if you think that it's, I would love to get your feedback, Ruth, and I think you've said it here. If you don't feel like it's really maintaining the spirit of what the metric um, is, I think that's completely fair to say. Um, perhaps we I think, can, um, yeah, I, go ahead. I think uh, Lawrence wanted to like reduce the um, survey like it, I, um, Lawrence said it was too much. I, I think that was the um, initial. Okay. I dare. Yeah, I think that was it. Just too much, like in terms of the questions? Yes, like in terms of okay. the questions. So, yeah, so I'll just I'll look that through this week and loop you on, on it. That'd be great. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah, sure. And, and if you want to chat about it too, I'm happy this. to chat about it. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Justin. Uh, uh, sure. It's like I was just noticed like some of this I think is challenging too because it's like in the next six months are you going to increase or decrease the time you contribute and it's like oh geez what what am I going to be doing in the next six months <laughs> that's the the lesson from 2020 I feel like it's like it's just hard to yes. like maybe some people can do that but I I don't know if I could be able to answer like what am I going to be doing with my life in six months or where am I going to be mentally that's Gosh. <laughs> that's like August or something I think. <laughs> All right, where was that, Justin? What role? Line was it? Uh, thirty. Uh, it was. Let me see. It was on forty-four. Forty-four. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, if you want to make that comment here, that'd be cool. You know what I mean? You can just come right okay. in here and just write yeah, a small. I'll do that. Write a small comment. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so that's that's where we're at there. So um, maintain clear and I'm back to the minutes. Who put these next the things under issues? The maintain maintainability, clean and clear code. Yeah, sorry, I went off for a second, but for the issues uh i tried to like put in like three of the metric ideas so we can nice. maybe start with that gotcha so those are yeah, potential so, candidate candidates for yeah so i just have like gotcha. on the bottom so we can maybe start from there top but for the one about clean up code okay. i think the conversation around it was um saying it's not related to the and i group i think you can check on that the conversation around uh, that issue was 
it was like it wasn't related so i don't know maybe we want to move it or close it off gotcha okay um well why don't so thank you for doing that ruth um why don't we kind of move if somebody could take these and move them into the agenda for next week we could start with that as possible metrics to start looking at in the work group is that okay with folks all right um thank you all right so the couple getting close to the end here so if you recall, we keep bringing this up. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing is taking a look at DNI within the CAS project and working with external people to also put together a series of guides that other communities could use if they want to reflect on their own DNI internally. And I, going through the issues, this is why you keep issues. I realized because they have great ideas in them from a long time ago. Sometimes, um, so there is an issue. If you take a look at, I'll bring it up on the screen too. Um, let's see. So Emma Emma Irwin um, had put together these metrics toolkits. And if you click on the other link in the minutes, it's the metrics toolkits as deployed when she was at Mozilla. And they're really, I just know oh, you can click it here too. Um, and what they are, are they're toolkits so that you as a, as a member of a community, I don't think they're all around DNI, but you as a member of community, as a member of a community can, can do things within that community. And the toolkits are pretty cool because they kind of say this activity is a, you know, a 30 minute activity, kind of like to your point, Nicole with badging, right? Like this is a, a relatively short activity and here's a way to move uh, through the activity and get it accomplished within your community. And Emma had taken a kind of a uh, first pass at what a metrics toolkit could look like from DNI. And I actually think this is a really cool approach towards helping other communities reflect on their own, their own DNI. So and the point being is this is what I was trying to think of a week ago. It was actually in our issues, which was cool. I was cleaning up issues and I came across this, which was super cool. And I was like, that's exactly what I was thinking. Um, and it seemed to work well at, at Mozilla. So I think when we reach out to folks to, to help us reflect on our own DNI, I'm, I, I would like to point them to these toolkits as possible outcomes of this reflection process. And it may not be structured just like what Emma has done here, but as a way for, you know, here's a, here's a two day task that you can do within your community with respect to how to reflect on DNI practices within your own community. And here's a set of, of, of things that you might want to think about. So does anybody have a, any comments or first reactions to this if you're seeing it for the first time or anything like that? I do. These are really cool. I, uh, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that I, f I, I know I, you know, I, of course I remember all of the work that Emma did and all of the value that she brought to this group. Um, but I, I don't know that I was familiar with these, uh, toolkits that she built back then. Um, but these are really, uh, the, I, I, could see that these would be really useful. And I, I think the thing I like about them, there's two things that I really like about them. One is that they specify an approximate amount of, approximate amount of time that it would take. And if you take a look, I don't know if you were looking at the, on the Mozilla side of things, <clears throat> but like quick market research. Um, you know, it, they're, they're just, they're not long. They're very approachable <laughs> in terms of what to do. Um, so yeah. 
This is cool. And even like difficulty and the number of people that would need to be involved and what you need to get this done. I just, I love them. Yeah. It kind of brings up a question for me. Um, with the SDDI um, group and then this piece, how those pieces fit together. So the SDDI group, just if people don't know, is another Linux Foundation um, project that is uh, software development, diversity and inclusion. And it's just started maybe six months ago, four months ago, not a long time ago. And a couple of us have been attending those meetings as well. Um, and so there's the background. And then to your question, I don't know <laughs> how this, how these efforts <laughs> will connect. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Because because I, I haven't um, attended uh, the meetings yet in the back of my head. I thought, gosh, when I, if I had, you know, unlimited time, I sure would like to, to get to one of those. Um, uh, but yeah, I, that, because that project, it, my, um, uh, my thought about that project was, it was really kind of the, the to-do group equivalent of, of surfacing best practices almost. Or maybe I'm misunderstanding there a bit, but, um, you know, so it would be basically the way that, um, the, the, the metrics we're developing would, one way that they would see, be put into action, so to speak. Um, and, and I'm seeing uh, Emma's toolkits as, as another way, an, an easy way to essentially take what is in the, these metrics and how do you then go apply them? What are some easy things to do within your own communities to, to apply these to your community? So has, has there been an SDDI meeting recently, Elizabeth? Do you know? Have I missed one? Georg, you were there too, no, there right? Hasn't. Okay. I think they're just now setting up like the individual like mailing list slash groups. Okay. Because um, we all kind of volunteered to be in a different focus area. So I think that they're still setting up structure of stuff. I, I think that's kind of my take on it. So maybe the, in the next meeting, we can raise Nicole's point, which is here's something that we're kind of doing. How can, <laughs> how can we share efforts and share work as to not repeat things and help each other? Yeah, I started to dive into over the over last weekend to dive into um, the mailing list and and that kind of thing to kind of look at okay where where things are and it looked like things sort of there hasn't been any activity that I saw since um, you know Christmas or 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 since yeah, the holidays. Yeah, the New Year. Yeah, the New Year. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, thank you for that, Nicole. Um, last last comment. I don't know who put that in there. <laughs> Does somebody want an invite to to be in the GitHub org? I added that there. I thought it'd be helpful for like the reviews and some of the stuff oh, yeah. that we were just doing. Um, I know I'm not in it, so I can put my GitHub there. I don't know if there's anyone else be... in the call. Who yeah, would, would like an invite, but it was just something I thought about. Yeah, yeah, an no thought. Yeah, no problem. Um, was it just to the maybe the DNI re repo? I'm not sure how things are how things work. I was wasn't sure if it's easier to add to the chaos org or just that repo, okay. but happy to okay. do whatever makes sense. Yeah, no, right on. I think um, I think that makes a lot of sense to me too. Thanks, Justin. There's a comment on Justin's pick profile, so apparently we have to click that and go look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't clicked on it go look at it i don't know what it is but 
before we go, you have to tell us what it is. What is it? I don't know. It's it's Uncle Iroh from uh, an anime, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Gotcha. I think Matt knew that. I'm gonna take a guess. I had, to, I had to call you out, maybe, but kind of looked like one of the dwarfs from the old Hobbit movie, but it wasn't quite right for that. So I was thinking Avatar, but I didn't know who it was. Awesome. Um, well, Matt, I will take care of that. Or I'm sorry, Justin, I will take care of that. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you for a very productive and very thoughtful um, 50 minutes. That was just great. I really appreciate everybody's everybody's insight and everybody's contributions. So until next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.